Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and of course you know this is Shackleton the Explorer. And in case you didn't realize, um, Ernest Shackleton was one of the most famous um, explorers of Antarctica um, quite a while ago, but you can, you can have a look at it, and that's uh, Shackleton's namesake. So last night I posted three videos on asteroid impacts, and it's really coincidental because just this morning there was a very near miss. It couldn't have been closer. This asteroid called 2019 OK went within 19% of the Earth-Moon distance. It was traveling 24.5 kilometers a second. The size, the um, Size nominally was 100 meters. Okay, the range in size is estimated to be between 57 meters and 130 meters. And as I'll point out to you, this is an enormous difference. If this meteor had hit Earth, it had, the, it had enough energy to take out a major city, like New York City, for example. A direct hit on that, New York City wouldn't exist. I mean, the odds of it hitting the Earth are very, very small, came very, very close, you know, um, but if it did hit, you know, it would also, you know, the Earth has got a big surface area, you know, we'd have to have extremely bad luck to, for it to come down over a major city. This one wasn't seen by anybody. It, it came to us from the sun, and it was only detected, first detected um, by telescope. Um, just uh, yesterday, day before, um, the trajectory was unclear, and then boom, it just shot by us. It's got a return time period of 2.7 years. It's definitely, um, you know, it's, one, it's, it's quite a way to discover a new asteroid that threatens, um, you know, regions on Earth you know, by just having it pass by us. But anyway, I'm going to, I wasn't going to do this video, uh, but of course, you know, I have to now. And like I say, it's, it, it was a really bizarre coincidence that this thing happened to come along after I just posted three videos on asteroids. So let me get right into the uh, details here. Okay, so this is my, um, so I uploaded three videos and uh, my friend David Korn did a Herculean effort to do a WordPress blog at my site, paulbeckwith.net, last night on asteroids, risks and impacts, and also he posted the air conditioning demand videos that I did just a few days ago. So these are the three videos that I posted um, last night. This is the first one, the second one, and the third one. And there's a really neat link here to calculate the impacts on Earth if <clears throat> if something hits. So I'll go through the parameters of this morning's um, asteroid 2019 OK, you know, using this uh, particular uh, site. And these guys, the Planetary Defense Coordination Office, you know, like I say, nobody knew about this thing until yesterday, basically. OK, so on my Twitter feed, um, if you go to my Twitter feed at Paul H. Beckwith and follow me, this is the post from David last night. And, um, you know, I say here, abrupt climate change threatens all of us on this planet, but it's not the only existential risk. Here I just ask, discuss risks from asteroids and comet impacts, show you how to calculate impact effects and discuss the Planetary Defense Coordination Office, which is basically ground zero for an ET attack. Um, this is a great site on deta with giving details on the city killer asteroid, um, and it's made a few um, articles. This is an, in Australia and another one in Australia. Um, Western news really hasn't picked up too much on this yet, but I think I think they will in the next few days. So let's have a look. Okay, so this is the Watcher site. Asteroid 2019 OK, it passed within 19%, 0 0.19 lunar distances. And it was the largest of the year so far that's passed within Earth-Moon distances. 
Okay, um, it was 71,806 kilometers from the Earth at its nearest approach. To give you an idea, to put this in perspective, the diameter of the Earth is 12,742 kilometers. So this thing passed between five and six Earth diameters. Um, and this object was estimated in diameter between 57 and 130 meters, or, which is 187 to 426 feet. This is a huge difference. This is a difference between a half a kilometer crater and a two kilometer diameter crater on the Earth. The speed uh, was 24.5 kilometers a sec per second. The uncertainty in the orbit was seven on a scale of zero to nine. Zero is very good knowledge about the orbit and nine is highly uncertain. Okay, so here's the asteroid here, 2019 OK, as it approaches the, our solar system. Okay, so the Earth is here and what you can see is them, you know, basically you can't discriminate that there was a miss, you know, it was so close. And this trajectory is 2.7 years. This is another view. Um, okay, so here's the Earth. Here's 2019, okay. Okay, and this thing expands the view when you get closer. Okay, so this is about a one in every 5,000 year type event, a, a collision, you know, with an asteroid of this, of this size and the Earth. So you can see the approach. And then it's expanded here to the, you know, Earth with the moon orbiting, and there it goes. It goes 19% of the distance between the Earth and the moon. It, that's how closely it came to missing. Now these are all the 2019 um, near misses. This is the distance from the Earth, the lunar distance. This is astronomical units. This is the diameter. So this is 2019, okay. 57 to 130 meter diameter. And these are other near misses. So there was a 54 to 120 meter diameter missing by 0 0.93. Uh, but I mean, this is like a shave. This is such a small miss. I mean, you can see, you know, the, this one here was even closer, but it's 2.5 to 5.7 meters. You know, 0 0.06 miss, 0 0.04 miss. These are all the asteroids within one lunar diameter in 2018. The number here, 13 in September, 15 in November, etc. This is uh, asteroids in 2019 within one lunar distance, so six in July so far. Okay, so that's an excellent site with lots of details. Now, this is an Apollo um, asteroid, okay? And the reason I wanted to look at this is, um, is because the Shelyabinsk ask asteroid was like this. So I wanted to determine, you know, is this an iron nickel? Is it uh, loose rock? Is it, um, is it compressed rock, etc. Okay, so it's an Apollo asteroid, so it's more like the Shelyabinsk asteroid here. Um, this was a 20 meter diameter, so this is a much bigger beast, but it's from the same sort of part of the sky as the Shelyabinsk one. And there, it, it came from the sun, so it was very difficult to see. Okay, so this is some of the news, mainstream news, and it has, it's been, had very little notice so far. 100 meter wide asteroid, 70,000 kilometers from Earth. Um, you know, it, comp it talks about the asteroid and how it was first detected here um, in Spain. This is the near Earth asteroid discoveries by a survey from 95 to now. And this is basically, it tells you who's found the thing. Okay, so most of them are being found by Catalina Observatory and by Pan Stars Observatory, the green and the purple sites. But some asteroids are still sneaking up on us, right? We can see them if they're visible at night, but if they're, we can't see them that well during the daytime. Asteroids are fainter the further they're from Earth. 
At the closest approach, 29 OK would have been visible with a pair of binoculars. Three days before that, it was a thousand times fainter, very difficult to spot, you know, coming to us from the sun. Basically, this was an extremely close call. Um, very, very, um, a very, very tight close call. So again, um, go to my Twitter feed and have a look at these articles yourself. I'll talk about one more, basically a city killer asteroid. Um, you know, 24 and a half kilometers a second, 100 meters in diameter, that hitting New York City, no more New York City, basically. And again, that would be extremely unlucky for that sort of thing to happen because the Earth is pretty big, the area of the Earth is pretty big, but it is very unusual. Um, it is a, it's a very unusual uh, um, asteroid. Okay, so Impact Earth, if you, go, if you Google Purdue University, purdue.edu Impact Earth, you can get this site um, and you can calculate uh, the impact. So what we did is I took the smallest diameter, 57 meters, um, you know, in the range, and it wouldn't produce a crater. Okay, then we go to, I took 100 meters and I took 130 meters. So let's look at the 130 meters. Okay, it would have broken up. It would have started to break up 60,200 meters above the surface of the Earth. It would have had the energy of impact of about 100 megatons. 150 megatons would be 10,000 times more than the Hiroshima. Hiroshima was 15 kilotons times 1,000 would be 15 um, megatons. And this is um, 100, so this is more like something like 6,000 Hir Hiroshimas, basically, uh, the energy. Um, crater, this would have created a two-kilometer crater transient crater, the final crater would have been slightly bigger, 2.61 kilometer crater. Okay, um, it would have uh, basically sent up ejecta, which now if we were 50 kilometers away, the ejecta thickness would be quite small, but there'd be like almost 10 centimeter or four inch fragments of rock coming down on our position. There would have been an earthquake 5.9 earthquake felt at our site, 50 kilometers away, 10 seconds later. Um, there would have been um, thermal radiation. Um, a fireball would have been seen, you know, uh, but it wouldn't have affected our location too much. And there would have been an air blast shattering windows in our location. Now, suppose that we were closer to the impact. Suppose that we were only 20 kilometers away. So if, if it was the upper diameter um, in the range, 130 meters, I assumed a dense rock, 3,000 kilograms per cubic meter density. If it was at an angle at 45 degrees, that's a typical angle of impact. Velocity, 24 and a half kilometers a second. I rounded to 25. If it was sedimentary rock and we were 20 kilometers away, what would have happened? The energy would have been uh, 258 megatons, which, you know, compare that to 15 kilotons, it would have been 20,000 Hiroshima's, so very significant energy. Um, it would have caused a, the two, a two kilometer crater, uh, 2.6 kilometer crater, 556 meters or 1820 feet deep. So a very, very large crater. The ejecta would have been, you know, the largest, the mean fragment diameter. We would have been hit with a rain of ejecta fragments. The main fragment, the mean average fragment diameter, 1.13 meters or 3.69 feet in diameter. So huge, large chunks of rock would have come down, rained down on us 1.07 minutes after impact. Thermal radiation would have, um, you know, caused first degree burns on, on, body, on people's bodies at this location. The, uh, it would have been the 5.9 earthquake. It would have hit within four seconds instead of 10. And the air blast would have, would have the buildings would have gone on fire, incineration, trees blown down, et cetera, et cetera. So this would have been a very severe impact had it hit. Thanks for listening.